COVID-19 is killing the American dream. Don't enforce a mandatory quarantine. Okay, do give me a second. Hey, what's up? Uh, what are you doing? I'm practicing protesting. What protesting? Oh, me and uh, a couple of guys I met on a Facebook group are going to go down to the city center tomorrow and uh, protest the quarantine. See, I made a little sign and, uh, and everything. Why? Well, because it's tyrannical for the government to control the food we eat, the places we go, uh, the things we wear, the thoughts we think. No, no, the no, no, no. That we what? Seriously, why? I'm playing a combo deck whose win condition is calling a judge over to your table, and it doesn't work online. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10-Minute Testing. We're, uh... Yeah, I have no excuse for this one. I watched a distant coder video and tried to reverse engineer Judge Call Turbo. I am sorry to say that my Discord, and Matajatica in particular, was not only successful, they improved and simplified the original combo. If you're allergic to reading, rulings, or zone management, I recommend you click away. And given my viewership metrics, I expect about eight of you to have probably stuck through this disclaimer. To those remaining, prepare for poll position. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Hit that little button below the video and I will never do anything like this ever again. So here's the list and no, it's not a Tuesday. This is really what we're testing. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now strap in, it's about to get problematic. Pole Position is a trap card with one relevant effect. When it's active, the monster with the highest attack on the field is unaffected by spell effects. Of course, describing the card in this way is akin to describing the Unabomber Manifesto as a scathing op-ed published in the New York Times. The card is often used to exploit one of the most unintuitive rules in Yu-Gi-Oh. You aren't allowed to take an action that will cause an infinite loop to occur. If something you do would force a game state that never reaches resolution, instead of sending the offending card to the graveyard or forcing a draw like Magic the Gathering, you just... can't. Now, some of you with a deep hatred of humanity in your soul might see where I'm going with this. If we could establish a game state in which, using pole position, any action our opponent could take would force an infinite loop, we could not only win the game, but also get our opponent a procedural warning for attempting an illegal action in the process. So here's how we're going to accomplish it. Using the Dark Warrior Toolbox, which you may remember from such amazing Turbo Tuesdays as Dark Sage, we're going to summon a Curious the Lightsworn Dominion and use its effect to bin pole position. Afterwards, we'll add the pole back via Nightmare Griffin, then link that monster away for Linkross. Finally, we'll summon an Invoked Purgatrio and equip our Curious with Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. In draw phase, we'll flip pole position. Because Curious has the highest attack, currently at 2700, it is immune to spell effects. This means the Divine Sword Phoenix Blade is negated and its attack falls to 2400. Invoked Purgatrio's continuous effect gives it 200 attack for each card your opponent controls. If your opponent activates a card, therefore, its attack jumps to 2500. If that happens, it becomes the most powerful monster on the field, and Curious is no longer immune to spell effects. Thus, Divine Sword Phoenix Blade's effect pumps its attack to 2700, at which point it becomes the most powerful monster on the field, and is therefore immune to the effects of Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. Now that it's back below Purgatrio, it's free to get the effect of Phoenix Blade, and now that it's back above Purgatrio, it becomes immune. This continues until the judge makes it over to your table. Basically, this combo prevents your opponent from activating cards or summoning monsters, with the exception of monsters with 2800 attack, at which point they'd outpace Curious with Phoenix Blade attached. Finally, before I give you the card by card, Please exercise caution. No automatic simulator has a mechanism for dealing with this loop. Despite Edo Pro's repeated attempts to become sentient, it lacks the capacity to predict which actions will cause an infinite and floodgate accordingly. So if you take this anywhere but dueling book, your opponent will look at you puzzled as your pole position heads to the graveyard on their first effect activation. If you do take this to a manual simulator like dueling book, God rest your soul, 
But don't be shocked if you're banned for being responsible for 90% of all judge calls. So with that, let's get into the card by card. All we need to assemble the combo is a Solda, so we're on a ton of enablers. First, our freebies, 3 Red Lair, 3 Thrasher, 3 Junk Forward, and 3 Butter Spy. Next are our Bergs, 3 Marauding Captain, and 3 Goblin Berg. Finally, our 1 cards, 3 Vion, 2 Malicious, 3 Neospace Connector, and 3 Aqua Dolphin. This deck has 8 Garnets, but only 3 of them are true Garnets. The rest are enabled by Dark Grefersens. After that, we're on Arborea, Plagues, who means we've got to draw into 2 of our 3 Garnets in our 60 card deck to lose, Arma, Smunk, Ferret, Olion, Dotscaper, and Zephyros. For spells, we're on 3 Called, 3 Drag Down, 3 DDR, Instant, Rhoda, Midbreaker, 5 Equips, 3 Shade Brigandine, a Reboot, and... <sighs> pole Position. In the extra, we're on 12 combo cards and a fusion target. Purgatrio, Carabonla, Power Tool, Muddy, Dugaris, Griffin, Masters, Curious, Isold, Halk, Link Spider, Link Cross, Baylinx, and then Boral Sword and Appaloosa if we're forced to go second. Until Link Cross is released, which is about six days from now, all you need to do the combo is a way to get Griffin off of the field. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against... Yeah, I'll be real with you, it doesn't really matter what we're up against, I just want to showcase the combo. We're going first, we're going to lead with a copy of Red Lair and an Instant Fusion to get a copy of Carabon the Warrior to our side of the field, followed by an Isolde Summon. We're going to use Isolde for Photon Thrasher and a copy of Armageddon Knight to our side of the field. We'll activate Armageddon Knight's effect as well as the effect of Sword of Deep Seated in Graveyard, putting it back in the deck and Plague Spreader into the Graveyard. We'll Plague's back this Garnet in our hand before Link summoning a Hawk of Hibrak, summoning an Arborea, and Synchro summoning a Power Tool. We'll use Power Tool's effect and ooh, a DDR, who could have expected? We'll then use Phoenix Blade and DDR to bring back this copy of Armageddon Knight, which we will use again for a Zephyros, looping it one more time, activating the Graveyard Effect of Phoenix Blade and the DDR one additional time in order to send a copy of Summoner Monk to the Graveyard and overlay for Dugaris. We're going to Dugaris Effect to bring back this copy of Summoner Monk, then we'll link Summon a Draco Masters and Summoner Monk for Rescue Ferret now that we have the zones. We'll go into a copy of Olion, a copy of Junk Forward, and a copy of Dotscaper. We'll go into a Muddy Mud Dragon here using Olion's Effect for a token and a Link Spider that enables a Curious Summon, which will send a Pole Position and three additional cards. We'll link Summon a Salaman Great Bay Link so we can Mud Dragon it away for a Purgatrio before making Griffin using Griffin's effect and then activating the graveyard effect of Phoenix Blade so we can go into Link Cross, equip our copy of Curious with Phoenix Blade, flip pole position in draw phase, and win the entire game. Our second match is up against, oh my god, I'm so sorry, uh, Spiral. This game just showcases that if the deck you're playing against is incompetent or bricky, or in the case of Spiral, both, this archetype is strong enough that it can still link spam to a W. Our opponent's going first, they're going to go ahead and activate terraforming before spiral resorting, setting one, and passing. Resort dies at end step, and we have free reign over the board. We've drawn a couple of Garnets. We're going to lead with a copy of Rhoda, followed by a Neospace Connector. That Neospace Connector is going to turn into an Aqua Dolphin, and because we led with a Thrasher, we'll be able to take this tough. We'll go into an Isolde and activate her effect in order to get a copy of Armageddon Knight from our deck. We'll activate Armageddon Knight, and we're just doing the combo here for a Plague Spreader. We're going to Dugaris back the Summoner Monk and eat a Called by the Grave for our troubles. No big deal. We should be able to link spam here. We're going to get Armageddon Knight because, of course, that card does not target. We'll Mally for Mally before going into Boral Sword Dragon, use Phoenix Blade's effect, and Plague Spreader back so we can switch that sucker to defense position before going into. Halk, a Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion, a Draco Masters of the Tenny, a Token, and a Link Spider. We'll go to Battle Phase, I'm a little greedy here, and it pays off. We get in for 3,000, 3,000, and lethal. So it's time for Game 3, and you know what that means, a best of 3 versus meta. Our opponent's playing Invoked Eldlich, and which deck do you think is going to win? Place your bets now. Will it be the deck bursting at the seams with interaction, or the 8 minute long choke point? It'll be a close one for sure! We're gonna lead with a copy of Vision Hero Vion, setting a Malicious to Graveyard, then activating Malicious's effect to enable a Link Summon of Isolda. We'll activate Isolda's first effect, and then second effect a Special Summon a copy of Armageddon Knight to our side of the field, triggering both the effect of Armageddon Knight and the effect of Deep Seated in Graveyard. After that, we're going to activate the effect of Plague Spreader and eat a DD Crow. Not confident to take the 66, I'm sure I can combo my way out of this. We're going to DDR back this copy of Armageddon Knight, then use its effect to send a copy of Zephyros. We're going to bring back the Zephyros, and then activate DDR again after Phoenix Blading in order to bring back the Armageddon Knight again. Uh, where do we go from here exactly? Okay, Dugaris is a start. We're going to get this copy of Summoner Monk to our side of the field, but we don't have the requisite material on board to make Curious yet. We're going to get an O-Lion, a Dotscaper, and a Junk Forward. Then afterwards, we're going to make a Power Tool Dragon, so we can get the token off of the O-Lion and this copy of Dotscaper back. Next, we'll activate Power Tool and... Okay, we do find the DDR, now I'm feeling stupid. We'll go into a Link Spider and a Curious. Curious is effective send a copy of Pole Position and a Nightmare Griffin, but we don't have the Purgatrio. Um, maybe we can do it if we use the tokens? Okay, we'll DDR back this copy of Plagues, but we 
don't have another fire monster in the deck. We can make the Muddy Mud Dragon, but there's no way we can make this copy of Purgatrio, and unfortunately, we're forced to equip our monster and pass. I'll activate Pole Position, but my opponent is going to go to Battle Phase, evenly matched, eat everything, and then on activation of Magical Meltdown, I'll concede. I feel like I could have won that if I had just not been a coward and DDR the Plague Spreader Zombie as soon as it was banished and then hit a 66% on the Power Tool Dragon later in the turn. Uh, okay, okay. No reason to obsess over it. It's time for game two. At the very least, we've opened the combo. Our opponent has a hand trap, but we should be able to do something through it. We're going to lead with a copy of Midbreaker that turns off half the hand traps in the game. We're then going to summon two warriors to go into an Isolde, activate its first effect, and activate the second effect to get an Armageddon warrior to our side of the field, or not. Okay, well, we can still normal summon our copy of Summoner Monk and use its effect, sending a Deep Seated to get a Rescue Ferret. We'll link into a 3 before activating Rescue Ferret's effect, getting an O-Lion, a Junk Forward, and a Dotscaper. Afterwards, we'll go into Baylinks to bring the Dotscaper back and make a format Appaloosa? That might actually do it. Uh, we're going to go into a Link Spider as well before passing it back to our opponent, who is going to meet it with an Evenly Matched. Well, we'll keep the monster that actually does something. They're going to activate Magical Meltdown and set one card before passing it back to us. Oh, this is pretty good. Well, we'll use Neo Space Connector for an Aqua Dolphin, then Aqua Dolphin's effect, and yeah, the jig is up, I see why this hand isn't going places. We'll negate with Appaloosa, and we are one monster away from Boral Sword Lethal. I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Until our opponent draws an Invocation. They'll fire it in order to get a copy of Invoked Purgatrio, then they'll put the A-Lister back in the hand and go to Battle Phase, walking over our copy of Appaloosa, and our copy of Neo Space Connector, and our copy of Aqua Dolphin. Next, they'll normal an A-Lister to get another invocation before Link summoning through Secure Gardener to make a Macaba as well. It's going to have to be something amazing off the top of the deck, and Goblinburg is not it. We'll instant fusion for a Carabonla Warrior, normal summon a copy of Goblinburg, overlay for Dugaris, activate the effect, get banished, <sighs> and concede. Well, we're back with the deck and- Who is trying to destroy my simulator? No, it cannot be! I thought all of those acts would throw them off of my trail. But Alpha Cretin has tracked me down at last. Wielding ultimate authority over the Edo Pro Shuffler, they've also given me the worst five card hand our deck is capable of producing. Every single card in their opener natively breaks the pole position lock. <laughs> well, Cretin, you're a formidable opponent. But if you think I'm going down without a fight, you've got another thing coming. I'm going to normal summon an Armageddon Knight. That's strong. Oh, we can bring back the Zephyros by bouncing the Deep Seated. Then we'll do Garus. We drew two cards. That's good. We'll activate Drag Down into the Grave. Uh, Rhoda. And then pass turn. Beat that. Oh my god, our opponent passes. Oh my god, we could do this! All we have to do is make Boral Sword. I don't think we can do it this turn, but we can definitely make an Appaloosa. We're going to Malicious and then Link 4 away. Uh, we actually could, unironically, beat our opponent! Uh, they draw for turn, they'll activate Gizmek Kaku. <laughs> Would have been a lot better before I had four negates, eh? And now I see I am no longer going to have four negates. Okay, um... Uh, well, maybe Plagues can get there. We'll Normal Summon Plagues, equip it with Sword of Deep Seated, and... Oh, come on. Come on! Did you really have to do that? That is just disrespectful. So, we're back with the deck, and... Ugh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I almost don't want to upload this. Uh, this is kind of candid, but, um... I think there's a distinct possibility that the only thing this does is make a bunch of people really upset. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's do the pros and cons. Um, uh, first, the pros. One, if there was ever a time I didn't want to do this, it's now, but it is consistent. Uh, it takes so little to get the combo going, and it has a built-in way to outdrawing Garnets. Two, man, this is... There is just something to be said for a combo whose finish isn't exactly an FTK, but ends the game on its own. It's unique, is what I'm trying to say here. And three, if you've ever wanted to be on a first-name basis with the entire DB judging staff, this is a good way to accomplish it. And the cons. One, please, <laughs> please, please do not play this deck. It is... Not fun for either player, it is not fun for the judging staff, it is not fun for the community at large, it's not fun for the Konami employee whose job rides on no one discovering this game-breaking card. Please, <laughs> please just don't do it. Uh, two, it loses to Eldritch's hand effect. All in all... <laughs> 
What a nightmare. So that's that. Thanks to my patrons, MeepMoto27, Tyler Slacks, Miko Reichman, Crispy, Sir Tachyon, Lucas Hansen, Schnoppy, Lavender Lemonade, Gusto Secon, Siberian Rabbit, Michael Oskvark, Dan the Manhoven, Blab Lake Root, Standards Objective, Jeff Leonard, Emperor Stove, TJ Steakhouse, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blast It, Burrito Man 93, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Fillerup, Adam Sunquist, Isaac Jackson, Second, Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Adrian Broad, Distrin, and others. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.